optical coupler. Optical coupler. And in the optical coupler, on one side is this light emitting diode. And there's the light emitting diode, the little arrows come out. Uh, that, that the little arrows that come out mean that uh, there's light being emitted from the, the part. You may see on these optical couplers an E on it for emitter because that's the thing that's emitting the light. On the other side is the phototransistor. And there's four wires that come out of this thing, two for the emitter and two for the detector. So you'll see a little, see a little E on one side and a little D on the other sometimes. <clears throat> or you may actually see a drawing of the, the part itself. You know, a, a little schematic symbol. Uh, I don't know, I have got another couple of them around here. Anyway, uh, this is a phototransistor. And it works with light shined on it, when light, when light is shined on it. Instead of putting voltage on the base, you just shine a light on it. It's just like an electric eye. You walk in a, you know, a liquor store or something, you break the beam, the, the bell goes off, same kind of thing. And we use these a lot in, in games. For instance, we use them uh, in, in the steering wheels, which is what the things are that I passed out. In a steering wheel, as you, uh, as you saw with the, tr with the track ball, there's a light hub that alternately breaks and passes the light. And that tells the game which direction you're turning the wheel and how fast you're turning it. Some games use um, optical couplers for accelerator pedals, for gear shifts. Uh, we use them all over the place. They're just they're track ball assemblies and so on. Um, the, the problem with optical couplers is that the entire time the game is turned on, regardless of whether it's being played or not, the LED is on. And the LED eventually burns out. That's what fails in optical couplers. The, the, the light emitting diode actually fails. Also, unfortunately, these LEDs are infrared. You cannot see infrared light. Um, it's the same as with, uh, with remote controls. If you, have a, uh, if you have a remote control, the, the LED that's in the remote control is infrared. You can't see that. I'm pressing the button. You can't see the light. But check this out. The camera is sensitive to infrared light. Watch this. See the infrared light blinking on the LED? So you can't see it now, right? But the camera can see it, which is pretty cool. Whoa! <laughs> In fact, what's really cool is if I, if I, can, I can actually get this so close, you can really see the little, uh, you can usually see the little, the, there, see the little chip of silicon inside? See that little square thing? Can you explain why? Beat me up, yeah. Can you explain why what? How come, we, um, how come the camera can... With the charge coupled device, the uh, CCD in the camera is sensitive. Oh, that's a nice shot. Is sensitive to infrared light where I, our eyeballs are not. Yeah, different codes. It flashes uh, different codes, not different frequencies, but <clears throat> but different uh, different uh, digital codes. Anyway, um, oops, I don't want to do that. Uh, where was I? Okay, anyway, the problem is that you cannot see that if that LED is on or off, and that's kind of a hassle. There's a new gadget that is really useful. I carry one in my wallet all the time. I hope it's still in here. It's available from Radio Shack. It's one of the coolest things from Radio Shack. And it's an infrared sensor. Here's the uh, here's the actual gizmo. Oops. It's called an infrared sensor. There's the part number two seven six zero zero nine nine. It's about six bucks. This little thing in the corner is sensitive to infrared light, and I can probably demonstrate that for you. Although I probably should have tried it out ahead of time. Let's see if this works. You see that? You see that? 
the glow there, right? Now, in this case, it's not just that the camera can see it, your eyeballs can see it too. If, if, uh, if you just kind of, I mean, all you gotta do is just hold it up against it and you can, you can see the glow. You probably can't see it from where you're sitting, but I can clearly see it here, okay? So, so this is a really cool deal, and the reason that this little thing is cool, I'm gonna pass that around, is that um, we also use these, for instance, in pinball machines, in the Williams pinball machines, to tell if a drop target's down. When the drop target's down, it, it puts a little piece of plastic in between there and blocks the beam. Well, when these things fail, the drop targets don't work anymore. And, and like I said, when they fail, what usually happens is the LED simply burns out. So all you have to do is take your little sensor card, hold it in there. If you see that it's glowing red, the optical coupler is really okay. If you see that it's not glowing red, the optical coupler is bad or the, the connections to it are bad or something like that. So that's really handy. Uh, it's really nice to be able to have the ability to, to check that infrared. Yeah, Ken? Even though I have one of those cards, there's times when I, you know, I cannot see the light in that thing, you know, it's bright day or yeah. the sun or something. Yeah. Can that be tested with a view or something? That's a really good question. Um, I, yes and no. Uh, <laughs> it depends on the circuit. Certainly, if you put your meter lead on this pin right here, the collector pin, and you alternately break and make the, the light beam, and you see that the voltage changes, that would tell you it's doing something. But the amount of voltage that's there depends on the game, and sometimes it's only a fraction of a volt, sometimes it's five volts, and I can't tell you what it's supposed to be. It's certainly, if you had more than one of these units in a game and you could compare the two, that would be something that you could do. But there's not a good test where you could have the, the optical coupler on your bench, for instance, and just check it with a meter and see if it's good or bad. Not really. You, you can, you get a junction drop of about 1.2 one way and open the other. But I've had them pass the junction test but not emit worth beans. So to be honest with you, what we do is substitution. In a trackball assembly, it's easy because in a trackball, you have two optical couplers. One is for up and down, one's for left and right. If it's not moving left and right, but is moving up and down, and you swap the two and the problem moves to the other direction, then obviously the optical coupler is bad. Um, on the other hand, when you have problems where there's just one optical coupler, like a steering unit, in a, like a steering wheel or something like that, if it doesn't steer, quite honestly, I change the optical coupler and that usually fixes it. Of course, oh, don't forget to clean it first. A lot of times it's just dust and dirt.